sorry. Okay, part five. Slide 25. Our bacteria has got into your body. It has got to wherever it needs to get. And one of the most important things it needs to do is to survive the uh, immune response. It can do this through a number of ways. Some of the best mechanisms involve simply avoiding the host defenses in the first place. So 16.7 on page 424, <clears throat> avoiding the host defenses, hiding inside cells, uh, avoiding phagocytes, avoiding the complement system, avoiding antibodies. So inside a host cell is a pretty protected environment in most cases. There are mechanisms by which our immune response can identify uh, things going on inside host cells, but certainly by getting inside a host cell, you are safe from many elements, particularly antibodies and the complement system. And phagocytes, these three elements of the immune response are all outside of cells. There are even cells that don't necessarily uh, have an, an intracellular uh, infection cycle that do just use cells to hide out. Staph aureus for infection, for, for uh, Staph aureus. In many cases, Staph aureus can be a very persistent infection. It comes and goes and comes and goes for several weeks after the initial infection. And that may be because of uh, Staph aureus's ability to hide out inside host cells. So it comes out, it causes all the problems. The immune system starts to tackle it, starts to reduce its numbers, and it then hides away inside <coughs> a cell. The immune, the immune response thinks the, uh, the danger is gone, and they kind of stand down, and then that triggers the Staph aureus to come back out and start causing more, um, more problems leading to chronic recurring infections. <coughs> Endocytosis, phagocytosis. Let's take a quick look at the difference. Endocytosis, we have our, our host cell with its receptors. The Bacteria, in this case, sticks, and then the bacteria is taken up into the cell. The cell kind of makes this divot, until eventually the bacteria is enclosed entirely in this little membrane sac called, in most cases, a vesicle. So that's endocytosis, the uptake of the cell. Phagocytosis is where we have our bacteria next to our host cell, and our host cell reaches out with pseudopods. And it keeps reaching out, and it keeps reaching out until once again the bacteria is completely surrounded by a membrane. And because of the mechanism, this uh, little membrane sac that the bacteria is in after phagocytosis is generally called a phagosome.
on to slide 27. Avoiding destruction by phagocytes. So phagocytes are a very uh, potent uh, kind of uh, branch of the immune response. Macrophages, neutrophils, sorry, uh, dendritic cells. These are the cells that do that uh, phagocytosis. They gobble up bacteria, typically then to destroy them. So the first thing, the first way to uh, survive against a phagocyte is to just not encounter it in the first place. So we've looked at this idea a little while ago maybe, but there are a whole host of chemicals that are made in response to uh, um, invading microbes. And one thing, one part of that response is the complement system, those uh, C proteins. And one of those C proteins, C5, can be split into C5A and C5B. And C5A acts as a chemoattractant. <clears throat> so the complement system or some mechanism triggers the production of C5A. C5A then acts as a chemoattractant and it brings uh, phagocytes to that site. The idea is in, then that the phagocytes arrive and then they can start detecting the, uh, say it's a bacteria, they can detect the bacteria or they can detect uh, the C3B that's surrounding a bacteria or they might detect the uh, antibodies that are surrounding a bacteria. But whatever other process is involved in tagging that microbe as being uh, something for destruction, obviously before it can be destroyed, the phagocyte has to get there in the first place. So there is a, a molecule that the bacteria make called C5A peptidase. It's an enzyme that breaks apart the peptide bonds of C5A. Basically snips up C5A before it can be detected by a phagocyte. Therefore, the phagocyte never arrives. <clears throat> Some other bacteria will just try and kill the phagocytes. So before the phagocyte arrives to kill the bacteria, the bacteria has killed the phagocyte. Uh, S. pyogenes makes a, a molecule that does just that. Once, so let's say that a phagocyte has been called to the scene, like a, a detective has been called to the scene of the crime. And the detective has a picture of the, uh, the perpetrator. And they look at the picture, and they look at the people at the crime scene, and they say, that's, that's the guy, he matches my description. So, in this case, the figure sign has arrived, but if your perpetrator is wearing a disguise, and you can't recognize him, then once again, uh, that will not lead to the arrest. In terms of the phagocyte, it won't lead to the cell destruction. One way that a uh, kind of one aspect of that disguise is a bacterial capsule. Here's our bacteria. And these white spaces around here are, is where the stain hasn't been absorbed. And this is the bacterial capsule. It's typically a polysaccharide. It can uh, surround both gram-positive and gram-negative, so they can both make it. And simply it is, it is that. It is a kind of a, 
a chemical disguise. It interferes with opsonization. Opsonization is that process by which we looked at here. The bacteria has been tagged and then the phagocyte can eat it very, very easily. In some cases, uh, Streptococcus pneumoniae, it has a capsule and the capsule itself binds regulatory proteins. So the, uh, um, the complement system is a very powerful system. It would destroy our own cells if we didn't have these regulatory elements. So uh, strep pneumoniae has these elements, it steals them. It's like our perpetrator uh, dressing up in a policeman's uniform. You don't arrest the guy because he is wearing the, the uniform. Another mechanism to interfere with opsonization is the production of uh, proteins. M proteins made by uh, Streptococcus pyogenes. In this case, it's a cell wall component, which once again binds regulatory proteins. In this case, uh, directly inactivates C3B. So C3, another very important um, complement protein, snipped up into C3A and C3B. C3B, a very potent uh, opsonization molecule, binds to the surface of bacteria and labels them for destruction. If the bacteria has these regulatory proteins, C3P, C3B doesn't bind, and therefore when the phagocyte turns up the scene, it doesn't know who it should be arresting. Okay, so next one on our list is um, avoiding, uh, sorry, avoiding destruction by phagocytes. Once again, a mechanism in avoiding recognition and attachment of the phagocyte to the bacteria by subverting the activity of antibodies. So we just took a look at antibodies. They have this Y shape. They have the antigen binding site on the end of the Ys and they have the, uh, the constant region, the FC region. It's called a constant region because it doesn't change. So this is the part that is like the red flag. And then phagocytes will roam around the body. They'll look at a particle like this and they'll say, I recognize those red flags. This is a particle that has been identified as being dangerous. I will destroy it. In this case, the bacteria has taken the antibodies and it's turned them around. It has a receptor on its surface that itself binds the constant region of the antibody and it turns the antibody around so that now the arms of the Y are pointing out. And because the arms of the Y are so variable, and because the arms of the Y only interact with their specific antigen, when a phagocyte comes along to a particle like this, it simply does not see the red flags. The red flags are pointing in the opposite direction. It just sees unrecognizable shapes on the surface. So therefore it leaves this particle alone. So I thought I, thought I would uh, further explain that just with a, an additional slide here. Antibodies are important, opsonins. Very similar role here, C3B is playing as an opsonin. Opsonin is a, a, a molecule that surrounds, in this case, a bacteria and makes it easier for the phagocyte to eat it. 
here we have, uh, say, a bacterial particle. Here we have our antibodies. Here's what's supposed to happen. And here are the, uh, here's the phagocyte. It has receptors that can bind to the FC region and it can only recognize the FC region and through a process of um, phagocytosis it can engulf the bacteria and destroy it. It simply doesn't have the, me the mechanics to recognize the other end of our antibody molecule. Okay, so <clears throat> on to slide 32. Avoiding destruction by phagocytes. Some bacteria, they don't bother in stopping the process. They survive within the phagocyte. So I guess back to our analogy of the detective arresting the suspect. Some suspects make no attempt to hide themselves, they make no attempt to disguise themselves. They just kind of, they kind of accept their fate. But then some of the sneakier ones will escape. Some of them will simply survive. And some of them want to be inside cells. So maybe we have a, a perpetrator who really loves to be in jail. That's where they want to be. So he'll commit the crime and then he'll be arrested. He won't put any, up any fuss. And then he is where he wants to be. And then maybe he can uh, start to run the jail. So maybe I'm running away a little bit with my analogy there. But we have um, Listeria taken up by the phagocyte, put into the phagosome, and then escapes from the phagosome. We have that process of the phagosome and the lysosomes. The lysosomes containing the digestive enzymes, the phagosome containing the bacteria. We have that formation of the phagolysosome, where the toxic chemicals from the lysosome are released into the phagosome, and that's what does the killing. This happens prior for uh, Listeria. Before the lysosomes are sent in, it's already escaped out of the phagosome. Shigella, it produces uh, um, molecules that cause the phagosome to burst and releasing the Shigella that way. We have our phagosome, we have our lysosomes. Again, there's a set of chemical uh, reactions and receptor-mediated stuff that has to go on before the one can fuse with the other. Salmonella prevents the phagolysosome formation. <clears throat> Salmonella um, gets ingested by macrophages, but then blocks this process. And there are some bacteria that can even survive inside the phagolysosome. It's a pretty nasty uh, place in there. All kinds of toxic chemicals being bombarded at the uh, bacteria. This bacteria that causes Q fever delays the fusion of the, the, uh, the lysosome and the phagosome and it allows that time to uh, express proteins, equips itself to survive. On to slide 33. So we've evaded and we have survey, we have uh, counteracted the effects of phagosomes. I, we have not, we've, they've not been called to the scene. They've arrived at the scene and they can't recognize the bacteria. They've arrived at the scene, they've engulfed the bacteria, but they haven't destroyed it. The next element of the immune response that's very important for our bacteria to be able to survive is the complement system itself. 
We've looked at mechanisms by which uh, bacteria can survive the complement system by uh, interrupting um, optimization by C3 or by interrupting uh, chemo attractant by C5A. But this is the mechanism which interrupts the direct killing of cells by membrane attack complexes. There's a couple of innate things that a bacteria might have. A gram-positive bacteria with a thick uh, peptidoglycan cell wall. That cell wall simply prevents the components of the uh, membrane attack complex from ever actually getting to the membrane. These elements have to physically insert themselves in the membrane. Imagine here a big thick many layers of peptidoglycan just as a barrier to, the, to these, um, these complement proteins. Gram-negative, this is the one case, or did, this is one case where gram-negatives are more susceptible than gram-positives. In previous examples, things like antimicrobial chemicals, we've seen that uh, gram-negatives have the advantage. Membrane attack complexes are once again regulated by host cells because host cells don't want to be killed by Max. And we have another example of a bacteria hijacking our regulatory elements, binding regulatory elements, which means that these membrane attack complexes don't form in the first place. Okay, on to slide 34. At phagocytes, we've had um, complement system and now antibodies. We've looked at some ideas behind antibodies already with uh, IgA, proteases, uh, snip it up. Neisseria gonorrhea produces IgA protease. The idea of antidote variation, the ability of the microbe to vary the shapes and structures on its surface, a, another form of uh, putting on a disguise. So one day you have a moustache, the next day you have a goatee, and the next day you have no moustache, no goatee, but sideburns. The next day you have a beard, the next day you have your clean shaved, and that just uh, confuses the immune response, we have to make a new response against each one of those different variations. Mimicking host molecules. So once again, the immune response is a very uh, kind of powerful response, and it can, in cases of things like uh, autoimmune diseases, it can be targeted against our own bodies and cause very uh, significant damage. But mostly we have trained our immune response to recognize uh, self from non-self. That's one of the central ideas behind um, uh, the immune response, or at the very least dangerous to not dangerous. So if a bacteria, once again, uh, strip pyogenes, can steal molecules that would otherwise appear in our own um, uh, membranes, in our own cells, and they will then display those molecules on their own surfaces. This is kind of the, uh, the wolf in sheep's clothing uh, approach. We have immune response cells looking around the body for, uh, for things that are harmful, things that are not self. So a bacteria that has cloaked itself in self molecules, uh, in host molecules, will be overlooked by um, the immune response. Particularly 
uh, antibodies. So this is a look at, when we look back at antibodies, these are all the things that antibodies do for us. These are all the ways that uh, antibodies can interrupt the, the reproductive mechanisms and, and uh, infection mechanisms of bacteria and indeed viruses. Okay, last, uh, last slide for this section, slide 35, avoiding the host events, hiding within the host. You avoid, there are no antibodies inside a cell, inside a host cell, there are no phagocytes inside a host cell, there's no complement inside a host cell. Most of the body's defenses are outside cells. Avoid destruction by phagocytes. Number one, preventing encounters. The phagocyte never arrives. I, the phagocyte is, first of all, not attracted. It doesn't go to the site to begin with. Second of all, the phagocyte is on its way and then it's killed, like it's assassinated before it can arrive. Then the phagocyte may arrive, but it has to recognize the bacteria as being dangerous. There's uh, a few ways we can do this, or a few ways the bacteria can do this. Capsules, proteins that interfere with C3B, turning our own antibodies around and pointing them in the wrong direction. <clears throat> and then some bacteria don't bother with all that stuff. They get eaten up and they have all their mechanisms to survive. They may escape straight away. They may prevent the formation of the destructive phases, or they may even be able to survive those destructive phases. Complement system, particularly killing by max, uh, killing by max, hijacking host regulatory elements, gram positive bacteria with their thick walls have this intrinsic um, resistance to max. And avoiding antibodies mechanisms, stepping them up, uh, changing your disguise, changing your antigens, and um, uh, shrouding yourself in host molecules so you appear more like a host cell than like an invading microbe. Okay, let's stop there.